I'm going to talk about um, dissolving childhood trauma through psychedelic therapy. It's my own personal experience. It's subjective. It's, I don't in, have any intention to try and pretend to be a, a researcher doing double blind studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is simply my experience of resolving childhood trauma through psychedelic therapy and just how amazing this medicine is and why I want to speak about it today is because I want everyone to know how, how beneficial it can be. Before I start, can I just ask anyone if anyone has benefited from psychedelic therapy themselves? Okay, great. All right, supportive audience, at least some. So um, in order to talk about this, I do need to explain um, why I needed therapy. Um, so I will have a little bit of detail about that. But the next stage will just be to talk about why conventional therapy helped a little bit, but really not very much. Then I'll talk about the experience of MDMA and psilocybin therapy, therapies for myself and why it's been so effective for me. Um, so very briefly, what was the problem? Well, I was assaulted as a child uh, sexually over a period of years in a British boarding school. If you're from overseas and you don't know what a boarding school is, it's a sick institution we still have in this country um, where people are take, sent away to school at seven and come out at 18 with a high degree of dis dysfunction, even if they haven't been assaulted. Um, and many of them still running, uh, running this country, which explains a lot of the problems in this country too. Um, and the other problem was that uh, when I was assaulted at school, I also disclosed the abuse to, um, to the headmaster. And it now turns out it seems like he was also abusing children. And therefore, for the next two years, instead of supporting me, he uh, pounded me into the ground, mostly emotionally, but also physically. And uh, it was a very odd experience also being taught by the abuser for, for two more years in this school. Uh, it was certainly a life lesson in, 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 in the bazaar. Um, so the impact, the long-term impact of these traumas, um, is a kind of long list, but the core problems, uh, what I call existential fear, other people call PTSD, um, is a very, very sort of deep, I call it existential fear because it's such a deep fear um, that, that follows you around all your adult life until you get treatment. Um, Self-rejection is a very important part of this. You blame yourself as a child. Most uh, uh, survivors of childhood abuse tend to blame themselves. It's a mechanism for survival. And actually, it's a very, very useful tool. And depression. I actually think uh, depression is basically self-rejection. In another, in, it's expressive of self-rejection. That's very controversial, but I, I, that's my experience. Um, the other problem is really emotional. Uh, uh, re reactions and behaviors, shame, distrust of others, uh, guilt, fear of success, and so on, paranoid ideation. Um, in my case, paranoid ideation didn't include just individuals and institutions, but entire countries. I lived in Japan for many years, and for the first five years, I was convinced that Japan was my enemy and that they were out to get me, which made for some very interesting negotiations with my business rivals, and apologies to them now. Um, and uh, compulsive behaviors, you, when there's a lot of pain, a lot of fear involved, of course, there's a lot of numbing to be done. So uh, a lot of people have talked about, I think, that today, and self-sabotage. Um, so quite a, little, quite a shopping list of things to deal with. Um, I went into conventional therapy when I was about 31. And um, when I did this, um, it had a limited success, I would say. I did talk therapy with a very excellent clinical psychologist, hypnosis, Ericksonian hypnosis, and others. Uh, various retreats for abuse victims, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and family constellations even. And it helped, but it was particularly in relationships, but there was some reduction in paranoia, uh, less compulsive behavior, but it didn't really, I would say it's, it was superficial. It was mostly a mental reframing rather than a, a visceral uh, understanding of the problems and a release of the problems. It was more like a mental reframing, and on a mental level, I was able to adapt myself to to, 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 the, the, to, to my situation better, but it really didn't help a lot. And this, this came through um, in the fact that I still had to deal with complex PTSD, uh, self-rejection, and depression. And I've listed these, but I, I think I'll keep it as short as we can. So you can, you can check that later in terms of the list of, of problems that continued. So uh, one day, I, 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 I kind of hit a crisis again because, because the conventional therapies have been quite superficial, really. Um, and uh, this particularly happened because I, would, I, I went to court to um, bring these uh, perpetrators of my childhood to justice. And the, the, the police were fantastic, but the Crown Prosecu Prosecution Service uh, were not very helpful at all. And this led to a crisis and, and really exposed the, the fact that these core problems of PTSD 
um, and depression self-rejection were still there. Um, so uh, just to give you the framework of my experience of, 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 of psychedelic therapy, um, first of all, I had six months of therapy. This was in Spain, by the way, uh, with someone in Spain who shall remain nameless, um, who was a, a, a fantastic clinical uh, psychologist anyway, but also had experience in integration work for psychedelic therapy. Um, so we started with that, and then also I, I did some holotropic uh, work, which is breath work, as other people call it, um, and this, this helped to take you into altered states uh, without uh, the need of drugs. It was very, very useful. Um, the protocol for the MDMA therapy, which is, again, was the same therapist, um, was very similar to the one uh, used by MAPS um, and uh, Michael Mithofer, and it was a th basically three MDMA sessions over a period of about uh, six months. It was about a month or two between each session, and I found it most effective when it was about a month or so, um, or six weeks. When it, one, one session, the, the delay between one session and another, one time was about uh, two and a half months, and I found that a little bit long. Um, the dosage was 100 milligrams, and then a 50 milligram boost after two hours for each session. Um, music was critical, and not a, the therapist was not only a fantastic uh, therapist, but also um, something of a psychedelic DJ. And so really fantastic, fantastic music selections and really helped me a lot. Um, I think music, as, as, as you mentioned earlier, music is a, is a critical component of the experience. And, you know, I've seen through these experiences that we are all just bouncing molecules. Um, and music helps us to bounce in certain directions, I think. Um, and the space was a therapist's office. I'd already felt safe there. Um, we had headphones and eye masks as well. Uh, it was very, very useful, uh, I think, to really to really go deep into the experience. The therapist was present all the time. Uh, there was some intervention by him. Um, he was, he was uh, he, when, when there was a lot of silence, he, he would actually ask how things were going, and I would talk. But most of the time, I gabbled away, um, talking to him about what was going on. And what indeed an incredibly brave and courageous person um, he is. Um, to, to, so, so the first session, I'll just go through the three sessions very quickly, um, and say what the experience was, and then how it helped, uh, and what the impact was of each session. The most important thing about MDMA uh, as, a, as a tool in therapy is that within 40 minutes, I felt safer than I had since I was two years old. For various reasons, since two, um, I had, I'd felt in danger, and this was the first uh, experience of safety. And it's fundamental to the experience. In 10 years of conventional therapy, I'd never felt this sense of safety. So it's a fundamental part of it, because when you feel safe, the resistance goes. And all of the problems, in my view, for trauma survivors, childhood trauma survivors, is that we resist very, very hard. And everywhere we can, we resist treatment, because we don't want to go back to the original pain. And if you have MDMA within 40 minutes, you are safe, and you drop resistance. It's absolutely incredible. And it's amazing to me that it's not available on every street corner right now because of how powerful it is. And when you have that drop in resistance, you go straight back in real time. It's like time travel to me, to those original events. And it literally was like being back in that room being assaulted. And this sounds very traumatic, but it certainly was traumatic, but it's within this cocoon of safety of MDMA. So this tool allows you to go back, have massively traumatic re-experiencing of events, and then you're able to hold it you're able to hold it in your hands and experience it again. It doesn't go away. It's incredible. That it's, I never could achieve this in, in conventional therapy in 10 years. I never got that far back and that deep. Nothing like it. So it's incredible. You go back. I had the traumatic experiences again. I could hold the original fear. I could feel the original fear again of, of, of the trauma, of the assault, as it was going on. And the assault happened over for many years, as, as, as I mentioned. So these different experiences came back again. And I saw again also the split from myself. Uh, many abuse survivors talk about how they're on the ceiling, um, watching themselves being assaulted or abused. And um, I'd certainly seen this picture before um, in, in conventional therapy, but I'd never actually been there. And I was there again seeing this, and actually then went back into the myself, the person on the bed being abused. And as I said, was able to, to, to experience it in real time. So this was incredibly important um, in, in understanding the grief of that child. 
that I was, and I felt this incredible outflowing of, of love and respect for the person I'd been, which might sound a surprise because, well, why wouldn't you uh, love your, and respect yourself? It's because you self-blame. Most people self-blame. They actually think that they were the cause of the assault, they were the cause of the abuse. And so it's a very, very healing process when you de-shame. So it's in real time in this way. It's, it's an incredible thing. Um, and also to understand the power of shame. There's this self-blaming power in your, in your life. But above all, in holding that fear, holding that fear and never letting that memory, that feeling go again. So if today, right now, I'm talking to you, I still have the memory of that fear, but it's simply now a memory. It has no impact on my life today. I can sit, stand here and talk to you, and I can tell you that five years ago, this would have been impossible, absolutely impossible to do. So it's a very, very, um, I would say, efficient uh, process going through an MDMA session. The second session of MDMA, um, helped me to put the blame back on the adults. It was about um, or seeing the adults again in clarity and seeing them as human beings rather than as monsters. And I think one of the things, again, that child abuse survivors have is they have a problem with uh, seeing people as monsters rather than human beings. And when you see them as human beings, the fear of people goes, goes down significantly. But the core was seeing that there's a greater pain than the, the pain of abuse. The real pain is, is, is the pain of abandonment because when someone's someone's assaulted or, or abused in some form as a child, there is, in effect, an abandonment. And this is the biggest pain, because what all children need, above all, is to feel protected and loved. That's the, that is the essence of childhood. And abandonment is the biggest pain they can feel, because it essentially nullifies the child. Um, and this is what I experienced uh, in, 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 in the second MGMA session, was that that abandonment is the greater, the greater crime here that happens in, when someone's abused. So this is fundamental to my recovery because when you can, um, when you can hold that original pain of abandonment, you stop self-blaming because you no longer have to resist that fear. Because what happens as a child is that the pain of abandonment is so intense that it is impossible to hold that hold that pain. There are two choices, in my opinion, for a child. To dis disassociate completely, i.e. go mad, or to blame themselves. And that's what children do. That's why so many children blame themselves for abuse, because if you blame yourself for abuse, you're in control of when you get abused, i.e. I blame myself. I was a bad person, therefore I got abused, i.e. therefore I can control if I get abused again. That's the mechanism of self-blame. And that's what you have to fix uh, when in, in, in recovery therapy for child abuse through psychedelic therapy. And this is what it's able to do. So and the, I'm rushing through this because we've got much time. But the third session it was incredible also in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, in seeing how the recovery up until that point had been, in my case, too, too mental, too, too, too based on, on, on the intellect or on... on mental processes, and I hadn't seen until that point that recovery is, is body, mind, heart, and therefore spirit. And I felt, had this incredible experience in MDMA3 of a, a kind of three, it's like a three-point lock. The heart, the mind, and the body all suddenly came into sync. And when they came into sync, the spirit kind of flowed into me, and it was this extraordinary surge of energy that happened. It was a phenomenal experience, and it informed, has informed the rest of my life since then in understanding that recovery from any kind of trauma in childhood has to be integrative. It has to involve the whole person. And when you do that, you can, you can, you can get access to the spirit that we all are. We're all connected by this spirit, and it helps to energize the recovery. That's the only way I can really explain it. Um, so... I'm going on here. So recovery is integrative, and it's also not an effort. Before, before uh, psychedelic therapy, I strived for years, exhausting myself with every kind of research into this um, process, and realizing what you have to actually do is let go, or as someone earlier said, be let go um, by, by this process. And that is how you recover, by letting go. And that is what I learned. And it is not an apathetic state. It is a beautiful energy that comes from this. Um, I also have an experience of, uh, with psilocybin therapy. I'm not going to talk it through, but this, this, in, this art is not my art. It's someone else's. This really um, expresses how I felt uh, through 
psilocybin. It is a guiding teacher, uh, in my opinion, or rather it allows you to access a guiding teacher. So very quickly, to summarize why MGMA is so good, I'll ignore the first bit, just the last bit, is it is like a surgical instrument for me. It's a very precise and very, very effective surgical instrument, and it opens the original wound. It then allows you to pull out the, the arrow of that wound, which is sort of festering and infecting you, and then cleans it, closes it, and all you're left with is just a little bit of scar tissue, which doesn't bother you at all anymore. It's fantastic. So um, psilocybin, I can go on for hours about because it's just fantastic as well. It's something is different. It's just incredible um, for me, uh, ac allowing you to access uh, the guiding teacher that is the universe. That's all I, all I can say about it. it you, you access the cosmos, and I guess many of you understand this already, but it's, uh, it's something very, very powerful. And having done the surgical work, as I call it, of MDMA, I was able to then move into and understand a greater purpose for myself. So thank you. I just have a picture of my, my wife and kids and I. And, uh, <laughs>